So my heart rate overshot. I felt faint and very dizzy at the 3K mark. Um, I'm not disappointed. I'm not one for a pity party. I just couldn't do it. Um, and sometimes it's better to just make that decision early and fight for another day. Oh well. Hey, so look, so this is not the race vlog I wanted to do. Because I've trained for 16 weeks for the Richmond 10K and I did not finish. 16 weeks. By the way, I'm Aubrey. I'm a very average runner. By average, I mean average. I'm not elite. I'm not elite at all. <laughs> <laughs> so when I say I trained for 16 weeks, it was a big effort. And this is my story of how this race went. Okay, so time check, 12 minutes past six, just walking to the station. I'm catching a 621 train to get myself to get to this race. Okay, so just got to the station. I'm waiting for my train. While I wait, oh yeah, I'm catching a 621, so in about three minutes or so. But I just want to talk about preparation. Unfortunately, I've had a very bad cold this week and the day itself is going to be a very hard day. So I decided to acknowledge those things but trust in the training I've been doing a lot more. To trust in what I believe is a good fitness for a sub 48 10k. To trust in the support I've been getting from you guys, people on my social media, more importantly, family and my running coach Martin Hutchinson. A big shout out to you sir and just sit. I got a message that just said, enjoy the day. So I'm almost putting the whole target aside and enjoying this experience as I'm actually living it right now. So let's go. Yeah, so in terms of gear, the only thing I, I publicly talked about on my Instagram is this shoe here. This is Adidas's Primex 2 Strong and that's what I chose to run in. What I hate about the DNF is does that DNF get attached to this shoe? And I'm sure there'll be jokes around that, but I want to tell you this, and I want to say it very boldly. This is one of the best shoes I ever run in. The performance, the cushioning for a bigger person, uh, an average runner that doesn't kick out like three minute per K pace. I'm telling you now, this is an amazing companion. Anyway, singlet, I went with this A6 singlet. I got this for my birthday actually. Um, really, really cool. I just love the look of it and it was gonna be a hard day. The back of it is breathable uh, despite the color being black, but it's very, very breathable. All sorts of perforations. And I went with what I believe to be the best running half tights ever made. These are from Nike and I think they're the Nike Trail ACG. I might be making an ACG part up, but essentially they've got briefs in the lining because for guys, things get a bit awkward when you wear half tights, things show in ways that they shouldn't. These have got you covered. And at the back of it, I've got a pouch for my phone. I've got pouches for random things, whether those are gels, keys, and then you've got these straps here in addition. I run with a GoPro just to film stuff. I can just tuck that in there. And honestly, in my opinion, these are the best half tights ever made. Not the most affordable, but the best ones out there. Oh, oh, oh. And then I get to the start line and there I am with Jake Riley. Marathon Olympian American guy. He's an on running athlete. He managed to knock out something like 30 minutes, 42. He won on the day. But the guys, the point I'm trying to make here, the guys who organized this event, saw me right to the front and there I am right just an average runner guy at the start of <laughs> honestly amazing day I'm at the start with the with these elites who are gonna knock out 30 minutes there I am aiming for my sub 48 yes this one's for all the average runners <laughs> <laughs> for the first time ever, I was at the front with the elites. This will probably never happen again, but hey, I loved it. The race starts and everyone just goes. Such an amazing experience to be there after all the training I've been doing. And we set off. My first 1K, the goal was shoot off and find my place. I was gonna settle in at around 4.48. 
between 440 and 448 and I was gonna float there. I've done it too many times in training, I was comfortable there. But obviously I haven't been training with a cold. I haven't been training with this man flu that attacked me. I didn't know how it was gonna go. Just being around and seeing every, everyone else running, the marshals, it put me at peace. But when I was approaching my second K mark, I started to feel very different. I tried to ignore it and carried on going. And I did my best up until crossing 3k. Under normal circumstances, I would tell myself, you're gonna keep going, just slow it down, just finish the race. It doesn't matter about the time, but I genuinely had to sit down. There's a kind lady that saw me, approached me and says, you're right. And she gave me this water. Uh, I poured it on myself, I had some of it. I had to pause it at that point. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. The 3K mark, I felt faint, um, super dizzy, and my heart rate just shot up. I genuinely just couldn't go on. I'm not one for a pity party, feeling sorry for myself. I'm not disappointed at all. You just have to bring things in perspective. Um, I was as prepared as I could be. I did my training, I trusted my paces, just a week of a nasty cold, a very hot day, just meant make a wise decision and, and call it early. Now look, this is by no stretch a pity party. I've never been one to feel sorry for myself and I still don't feel sorry for myself now. Here is why. And this is why to me, this is not even anything to be upset about. I'm a guy who approached my 16 week training at the personal best of 53 minutes and 54 seconds. Four weeks within that training with a guy named Martin Hutchinson, my coach, we got that time to 50 minute, one second. That was June 4th. On July 9th, I ran London A610K with two of my favorite YouTubers, Ben is running and Cole running, and I managed to get my first ever sub 50. To just have the audacity to try a sub 48 when you're me, that's a plus. To be gifted a running place at a, such an amazing run, that's a plus. To be given the start at the start with these elites, this guy's an Olympian. That's a plus. So you know, I don't necessarily see this as a regret or that I'm upset. The only two things that upset me too was I wish I could give the Richmond Run Fest organizers a better story. I wish I could give the Primex Too Strong a better story. Apart from that, I'm a much better runner than I was 16 weeks ago. I run now. This is what I do now. I enjoy running. When I've got free time, that's what I do. And in 16 weeks, I've come leaps and bounds way past where I was before. So don't take this as a pity party. This is just a guy who had a stumbling block. And you know what? It just gives me fire for the next one.